Well, the U.S. has vetoed a U.N. Security Council resolution for a ceasefire as Israel Hamas war enters a third month. Today, people crowding into a shrinking area of the Gaza Strip as the Israel Hamas war enters its third month. What's going on in Israel with this war? What the war in Israel is telling us. And this book will tell you how to be safe. The war between Israel and Hamas has now entered its third month. The war between Israel and Hamas is now entering its third month of fighting. The Israel-Palestine conflict has entered its third month since the October 7th attacks. The whole world seems to be very concerned with everything that is happening in the region, and so are we. As we know that Israel has got a special corner in the end times biblical prophecies, most of which are fulfilled already. And some are fulfilling right now, right in front of our very eyes. But we still need to know about what is happening in Israel at the moment, in a slightly detailed manner. And for that, we need to listen to some experts' words like Robert Breaker. This is where our main focus is going to be in this video today. So without any further ado, let's get started. Hello everybody, I'm Robert Breaker. So turn with me if you would to Hebrews chapter 10. And a lot of people have asked me to talk about the war in Israel. What's going on in Israel with this war? What the war in Israel is telling us. Now Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. We should exhort each other. Robert initiates his sermon while being out in the woods to discuss the war in Israel by creating a tranquil atmosphere. He starts off by using the Hebrews chapter 10 as a foundational scripture for the rest of his sermon. Now we are very much familiar with the fact that in a world riddled with war and upheaval, Israel's ongoing conflict serves as a stark reminder of the Bible's perennial importance. As Hebrews 10.25 encourages us to support one another in difficult times, this notion is critical in comprehending the Israel conflict. This struggle goes beyond simple political disagreements, reflecting the profound biblical prophecies that foretold such turbulent times. And that is something Robert is telling us in this clip as well. But I do believe we could spiritually apply that to us as well. And that's what we want. We want Jesus Christ to return. Israel is a nation again, and God put them there for a reason. And sure enough, we have this war taking place. It's not about me being right. It's about the Bible being right. Because the Bible is future history written before it takes place. Now, you might not know the timing, but you do know what is next. Here, Breaker talks about the critical importance of the rapture and how much it is important for the believers. He connects the current situation of Israel with the biblical references that are already mentioned in the book. As believers, this is our faith that the Bible is always right. And sure enough, What's happening in Israel at this very moment is something that was indicated by the Bible many years ago, and that's what Breaker also talks about. Breaker highlights Hebrews 10.25, emphasizing the significance of mutual support at critical times, a premise critical to comprehending Israel's conflict. He observes that the battle extends beyond geopolitical concerns to biblical prophecy. The first thing I believe that the war in Israel is telling us is that God's promises are real. A lot of promises to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob and to the 12 tribes. And this is the key word, forever. That God is going to do that and he's never going to forget his promise. What we're seeing over there in Israel now is that God always keeps his promise. This is written in Isaiah. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. Who had heard such a thing? Who had seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day, or shall a nation be born at once? 
For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. In 1948, Israel declared itself a nation again, and it was a nation born at once. So this is a promise of God to Israel. The first thing that is being indicated by the speaker is the promises of God and how real they are. According to Breaker, the continued conflict in Israel emphasizes the veracity of God's promises. He opposes replacement theology and believes that God will keep his promise to the Jewish people. Isaiah 66, 7 is cited as proof of a biblical prophecy here that is being fulfilled through present events in Israel. Not only that, but Breaker also talks about God's promises to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the 12 tribes, emphasizing their everlasting nature and applicability to present Israeli events while opposing replacement theology. Now we can say that the events that are unfolding in Israel are not something to be taken lightly or ignored. These are actually the events that are indicating that God always keeps his promise. And secondly, what has been said in the book is not a joke, as many people call talk about the Bible. Isaiah 66-7 can also be taken as a reference how Israel was formed as a nation in 1948 and how they dispersed all over the globe after that. Thus, these events are a living proof of God being steadfast in keeping his promises which are dynamic, always unfolding, and manifesting in the present. The ongoing battle in Israel bears witness to these promises, illustrating the tenacity of God's words and his unwavering fidelity to his people. Real evil exists in this world. That was written almost 2,000 years ago. And if you know what took place in October of 2023, the borders were overrun by Hamas. And they began to do atrocious things as they attempted to overthrow Israel. So we see that real evil exists in this world. And so I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that's just the beginning. It's going to get worse, unfortunately, according to the Bible. It's a hatred towards other people of a different race, which I am very much against. But I believe we're starting to see that that exists. I don't want to see Palestinians killed. I don't want to see Jews killed. I think we should all come together in Christ. Now this is again a very crucial point that has been brought to the front by Robert Breaker. For this, he refers to 2 Timothy 3.1 that was written almost 2,000 years ago that the perilous times will come. Now we are familiar with everything that unfolded in Israel in October 2023 and how the whole situation of Israel-Palestine has turned upside down after that. The attacks led by Hamas were something that had left everyone in a deep state of shock. Actions like these are never accepted by anyone and that is also what Breaker is talking about here, calling these actions as fundamentally evil. He uses 2 Timothy 3.1 here as a reference. The Israeli war also shines a harsh light on the widespread reality of evil in our globe. As Timothy warned of terrible times, we see these warnings manifest in horrors and injustices around the world, especially in the heart of Israel. The battle serves as a sobering reminder of the evil that pervades our world, forcing us to confront and address it in the light of biblical truth. And we're starting to see more and more reprobates. The Bible warns about someone who is a reprobate. What is a reprobate? Well, it's someone who does not want to get right or do right or get saved. Now, God can possibly intervene and, and change their mind, but a reprobate is someone who shows themselves as someone who doesn't care. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work, reprobate. One thing we know for sure that happens every time when something like a war unfolds itself in any part of the world is the rise of people without moral scruples. Breaker uses Titus 1.15 here as a reference to talk about such reprobates. He talks about how and what the mindset of such people is. These people believe that whatever they are doing is right and they never change it, even when what they are doing is absolutely wrong and makes no authentic sense. Breaker gives the reference of the verse saying that these people do have the faith in God and they appear religious as well, but somehow this religious side of them is no good for anyone as what they are onto is nothing but evil and that's why they are called reprobates. In the backdrop of the world crisis and the strife in Israel, he discusses the emergence of reprobates, individuals who reject God and moral principles. In these challenging times, we see an uptick in reprobate behavior people who openly defy God and moral principles. This concerning trend, foreshadowed in the scriptures, is becoming increasingly visible in people's behaviors and attitudes, 
even as it relates to the conflict in Israel. The rise in such behavior corresponds to prophecy, showing a moral and spiritual collapse at the end of time's approach. And we're seeing a giant increase in reprobate behavior. Someone that has gone that far down the road of sin to where it doesn't prick their conscience to know that that's wrong, we're supposed to be moral, we're supposed to be just, we're supposed to be good. Elaborating his point about reprobates a little further, Breaker then talks about such people who are actually doing that stuff in the world today. What unfolded in Israel on October 7th is a clear example of that. And that's where we should be consulting the Holy Book as it already talks about it. The increase in reprobate behavior is something very common in this world today, and that's what Breaker wants us to think. He demonstrates the reprobate behavior of people that would go to any limit just to get what they want, and in the process, they will literally not think about the way of getting what they want, whether the way they're opting for is right or not. We also see that raids are possible soon in the United States and other countries. What happened in Israel happened because there's a certain group out there that doesn't like the people of Israel. That same group does not like the United States of America. They are desiring to do in our country what they've done over there in Israel. It might happen. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 28 says, Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. And God says when the fathers set those up, that means this land belongs to this people and you shouldn't have people from that boundary coming over to this boundary. Because when the borders are open and people can come across illegally, we have no idea who's coming in or out. God chose the people of Israel and put them in their land many years ago. And then you might fall and worship their false gods. And that is something God was very much against. Are you prepared if what happened in Israel happens in America? As believers, we know by the end of times, everything will be so disrupted from its actual pattern that it will nearly appear impossible to believe. And one of those things will be the crisis of the political situation around the globe. Breaker warns of probable global economic and political system resets, citing biblical prophecies regarding the end times, such as the introduction of the Mark of the Beast. Now we are familiar with what happened in Israel and who actually did all of that. The people who are responsible for what happened in Israel are the same people who do not like the United States and want to eradicate it as well. And they wish to do the exact same thing with the U.S., just like what they did with Israel. Breaker talks about such people here. He is emphasizing on the fact that we should be ready for any situation if something like that happens. But, of course, that is something no one would want to take place. We are at a critical moment in which there is a discernible drive for a global reset that encompasses political, economic, and social spheres. This movement is disturbingly similar to biblical prophecies about a one-world government ruled by the Antichrist. The events unfolding in Israel could very well be part of this bigger storyline, laying the groundwork for the predicted global shifts. People are saying this everywhere. I'm seeing it on bumper stickers of cars. I'm seeing it on license plates in the front. I'm seeing it on signs on the side of the road. Normal is not coming back. Now everyone's saying, well, let's just hit the reset button and start all over. And to start all over because inflation is so bad, let's just, let's change the entire monetary system to some sort of cryptocurrency. They think money is a piece of paper. That piece of paper is nothing but a piece of paper. When we talked about reprobates, we meant the people who do not see the good or bad when they are going to do something. If getting a thing, like a piece of land or any other property, is their eventual goal, they will just go for it without thinking about the harm that it is going to cause to other people. Breaker connects the same people with the same mindset as the ones who wish to reset things of this world into their favor so that they can have final control over everything and every person. If we talk about the kind of global situation we are in today, we'll see that we are at a critical moment in which there is a discernible drive for a global reset that encompasses political, economic, and social spheres. This movement is disturbingly similar to biblical prophecies about a one-world government ruled by the Antichrist. The events unfolding in Israel could very well be part of this bigger storyline, laying the groundwork for the predicted global shifts. Bringing in the mark of the beast in which someone has a chip in their right hand or in their forehead. Sounds like that's what they're working towards today. How about a political reset? I don't know if you are following what's happening in America, but uh, America is divided. But we see one group takes over 
and a lot of people run to them and say, yeah, we're on this side, we're against you. Why can't they get along? And those who are working for the devil or Satan to bring in the, the Antichrist system, that's exactly what they want, divide and conquer. Have you looked at other countries like Argentina and Brazil and countries like that and how they've changed from a form of government that's democratic and even a republic to how they're headed towards socialism and communism? The goal of socialism is communism. So if someone is a socialist, you might as well call them what they really are. They are a communist. Socialism always bankrupts a country. The only thing that works is rugged individualism and republics. And what he was saying was, I wonder how we could get us all to unite together in such a way that all the world is in agreement. The push is globalism, a one world global planet. And he rules for a thousand years in Jerusalem. So basically, who would you rather have in charge? A wicked ruler? A dictator who is evil or a benevolent, sinless, perfect being, I'll take Jesus Christ and I will take him as my savior. Breaker warns of probable global economic and political system resets, citing biblical prophecies regarding the end times, such as the introduction of the mark of the beast. He also puts light on the times when there is going to be just one global currency, the mark of the beast, and how it will be held important for everyone to have the mark of the beast. As believers, we also know that by the time the Antichrist will come into this world, what he'll want from everyone is to obey him in every single thing. Whether it's your business or following a religious pursuit, he will want to have that ultimate control on this world, and for that, the stage will be set beforehand. We have seen it in Revelations 13, 16 through 18 that no one will be able to buy or sell unless they have the mark of the beast on their forehead or on their hand. And that's what Breaker is also trying to tell us, that we need to be prepared for those times as they are approaching nearer and nearer with the passage of time. Breaker also tells how crucial it is for everyone to be united at this point and not divided. He also asks the question from us, who would we want to be our ruler? a wicked one, or a person of truth who we know as Jesus Christ. And at this point and in these times, where are we seeing the bad happening everywhere in this world? Maybe we should decide and be on that side. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8-12 through 12 tells us, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. When the devil takes over, he is going to lie, lie, lie. The devil comes into power through lies. Have you seen any lies lately? Maybe in the last couple of years? This is something very crucial again, and it needs to be given consideration that we live in a world today where lying to other people has become very common. According to Breaker, that is how Satan is going to rule this world, by setting up a system where people and countries getting closer to each other and together on one platform for what they'll call a one world system, but they will not be bringing that system with truth and righteousness, but with deceptions and lies. That's what 2 Thessalonians 2, 8 through 12 tells us, as well as what Breaker is pointing out here. The war in Israel is telling us that the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem is coming very soon. So I think they will somehow be able to rebuild their temple. And that might be part of the peace agreement. There must be a rebuilt temple in Jerusalem because the Bible says that's where the Antichrist goes and sits down. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ is at hand. Day of the Lord is the Armageddon and the Millennial Kingdom. The Antichrist has two names in the Bible. He's called the Man of Sin and he's called the Son of Perdition. So here we see two names given to the Antichrist and he is revealed to the world as the Man of Sin. And when he is revealed, the rapture takes place and we all leave. That very moment he comes on the scene, then we leave. The Antichrist sits in the Jewish temple and says, no, I'm the true God, Jehovah. There must be a rebuilt temple in Jerusalem. And so what is the war in Israel today telling us? That it's all working toward them having that temple rebuilt. But in Israel, there are people that are ready to rebuild a temple, probably bigger than Solomon's temple, and they want to build that. He wants to sit in there as well. And he will, the Bible says. In 2 Thessalonians 2.1, 
there's a clear hint of the rebuilding of the third temple in Jerusalem, and that's what Breaker is pointing out here. Now, we know that before the end of times, the Jews are going to rebuild their third temple for which they will be expanding their land. In light of the current events that are unfolding in Israel, we can predict that the time for the rebuilding of the third temple is approaching day by day. Over here, Breaker examines the possibility of restoring the temple in Jerusalem as a crucial signal of prophetic times. Over here, Breaker examines the possibility of restoring the temple in Jerusalem as a crucial signal of prophetic times, as prophesied in Thessalonians and as a forerunner to the emergence of the Antichrist. And the current war in Israel is a clear indication of that, and how they are trying their very best to have that temple rebuilt. This war in Israel can also be taken as something that is going to unfold the events of the rebuilding of the temple. According to Breaker, the temple that the Jews of Israel want to be rebuilt, as he has seen it in different pictures, is even bigger than the Solomon's temple and they are working towards that goal. As per Breaker's opinion, that very temple is going to be the place where the Antichrist will sit just the way God sat almost 2,000 years ago. Just by looking at the current scenarios, it feels like that time is very near, and so we, as believers, should be prepared for it. That the rapture is near. I know that Jesus Christ is coming back very, very soon. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And how we shouldn't be shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. A lot of people out there saying, there's no rapture, there's no rapture. They're just what the Bible says, those that are trying to shake you up into saying there's not one. It is a comfort to me to know that we're living in an evil, wicked world and bad things are happening, but that I have a God who loves me who is going to come back and get me and take me up at the rapture. The body of Christ is the bride of Christ. Who in their right mind would think that God would do that to his church? So there must be a pre-tribulation rapture, and that's what I believe. Now, the last thing I want to say is this. Redemption is necessary. Titus chapter 2, verse 13 through 15. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So I do my best as a preacher, an ordained minister, to preach to you what the Bible says. You need to know how to get to heaven. God doesn't want you to go to hell. God did everything necessary for you, for you to be saved and go to heaven with him. God says you come to him and you accept him by faith. Faith in what? Romans 3.25 says, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. The war in Israel is showing the whole world just how evil, evil is. There are many reprobates who are evil, who are planning raids and wanting to retell lie after lie after lie to deceive you. Because this is a book of history written before. And this book is true. And this book will tell you how to be saved. The very last and the very important point for us as believers is this one. And that is what Breaker is also saying. The current war in Israel is, yet, another very crucial indication of the rapture and how it's drawing closer and closer with each passing day. In light of current events, Breaker highlights the urgency of the rapture and the need for salvation, imploring viewers to find redemption in Christ and to remain cautious. According to him, all of these phenomena that are the Israeli conflict, the growth of wickedness and reprobates, the global reset, and the potential reconstruction of the temple ultimately lead to the rapture being close. This historic event, prophesied in Thessalonians and other scriptures, will see believers taken up to meet the Lord, marking a turning point in the prophetic timeline. The need for redemption becomes crucial in the face of these developing catastrophes. Redemption through Christ is more than just a theological concept. It is our hope and certainty in these troubled times. The ongoing crisis in Israel, together with the previous indicators, should serve as a wake-up call to all to seek salvation and embrace Christ's redemptive power.